Welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 10, this is Episode 12. Today I'm over at the gold farm that I built in the previous Hermitcraft episode, one of my favourite projects I've worked on in ages. I said this last time, but it is the perfect mix of interesting redstone devices and things that require a small amount of brain power to construct, mixed with just repetitive block placing. And you get the really nice payoff of watching zombie piglins just fall out of it constantly and die. That, that makes me happy. Now towards the end of the previous Hermitcraft episode, I went down into the nether waste to light up all of the areas underneath the bedrock, which went incredibly well. Have Dude. faith in us. Yeah. And, and oh! <laughs> or at least I thought it went incredibly well, but as you can see, I'm standing on this platform here and the, the zombified piglins have kind of stopped pouring out. They're now trickling out. It's definitely better than it was before I did all of the lighting. It's, it's not much better, <laughs> to be honest with you. So obviously I've missed a massive area somewhere. So that is my first project for today. And oh my goodness, did this take a lot longer than I expected. I kind of thought that I was just going to roll up there, grab a, a full inventory of beds, and then do the work, and then go back up to the platform and everything would be done. That was absolutely not the case. You know, when it comes to lighting up areas to protect from mob spawning, I have to remember the golden rule that I have just come up with, which is that you will get to 80% done within an hour, and then the remaining 20% will take you five hours. <laughs> it's just, it just seems like it, you're endlessly finding new areas and new places and things that are hidden away and places that you haven't lit up properly. So I was just constantly going back and forth. I was placing all the beds, blowing everything up, thinking I was done, going up to the farm, seeing that it wasn't really working that well, getting my camera account, seeing that actually there's massive pockets of piglin spawning, going back down underneath, blowing everything up, going back up to the farm, rinse and repeat multiple times over, but finally, I'm at a stage where I'm happy. And like, don't get me wrong, while I'm up at the farm, there's still the occasional piglin spawning, but it's not enough to massively affect the rates of the farm. And now this thing is working efficiently, and I, I think we should get lots of gold from it. I guess it's time to find out. I mean, this certainly sounds pretty good, and it's certainly looking pretty good. Things aren't slowing down at all, and if we imagine that these weren't dying, but instead were actually staying alive, There'd be plenty for me to kill quite quickly. Oh my goodness, I don't have a sword. <laughs> I still don't have a sword. Oh, oh dear. I've made a mess. Which reminds me, I kind of need to re-gear up after my death in the previous Hermitcraft episode. There's still some bits and pieces that are missing. So I've got two mending books. I've got one protection book. That's for the helmets. And then I'm going to need Unbreaking 3. And also Aqua Affinity. That one goes on your head, doesn't it? And then I'm assuming Respiration as well. Is that even in here? It is, okay. So that is 15 diamonds so far. I've got myself a silk touch book for my pickaxe. And then for the sword, I need sharpness. I need unbreaking. I need looting. 30 diamonds going in. And I also got myself some fire aspect from this shop over here. Oh yeah, that's a good noise. That is a good noise. So now let's spend an hour killing some piglins and see how much gold we get. Except it wasn't quite an hour. You see, I started swinging my sword and noticed that sweeping edge was absent from my sword, which meant the entire gold farm was incredibly slow. So I went to the district and found that nowhere actually sells Sweeping Edge. It's one of the enchantments that doesn't exist in any of the shops. But thankfully, Corallis was around. Oh man, right, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Tripled the efficiency of my gold farm, uh, which is very, very helpful. Ah, you're making one of those, yeah. Well, Wait. good luck, Mambo. Oh, I'll pay, no, I'll no, pay, no, no, I'll no, pay no. you in, in, in no. gold. There you go. That's really useful. Enjoy it. Amazing. Thank <laughs> you so much. 19 gold bars. I know. What a cheapskate. <laughs> oh, well, you didn't want anything. You can't call me cheap now. You didn't want payment. You know what? That's my only inventory slot. Let's keep that for now, okay? I will, I will be back one day. So let's add this enchantment to the sword, enjoy the sweet sound of Enderman dying for a bit, and then get back to killing zombified piglins. But even this bit wasn't plain sailing. I got myself an auto clicker so that I didn't have to kill the piglins manually. I left it running for about an hour. I came back and it turns out the trial on this free auto clicker had run out after five minutes. So I tried to buy the auto clicker and the website was down, which all seemed a bit dodgy, so I got myself a different auto-clicker, then almost died of hunger. Thankfully, I managed to catch it before I actually died, grabbed my beacon, set up a regen one, and then finally I was sorted, and I was able to get myself some gold. So the gold farming is now complete. Let's have a look and see how much gold we have got. I've gone to the wrong side of my storage system. Is there any way that I can do this? Oh, I'm terrible at the game. Okay, what are the predictions? I don't even know. It's... It, that's good. 
Okay, that's good. And a few there as well. I think this thing was properly working for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So that is pretty good going for two hours. If I sleep through the night, that means I should get like a double chest of gold blocks if I leave this thing running. That is definitely nothing to be sniffed at. So that means that my gold permit, the permit that I have to sell gold, is now going to be used. I'm actually going to do it. There is another half to that permit, which is the iron side. I will crack on with that soon. But everybody knows gold is much more useful than iron. I mean, think of all the times that you've needed to use gold in Minecraft. You've got... you got, you got powered rails. It's powered rails. You've got, um... You can, you can make your head look fancy, you know, with a nice golden hat. Um, there's there's many uses. There's many, many uses. Right, let's build up a gold shop. Where am I going to build up the gold shop? Well, we've got the item frame shop here. There's a horn shop next door, which looks incredibly fancy. I mean, I, I do kind of like this spot. Do you think we'd be able to expand out the back? We could kind of wrap it around like this. Let me quickly explain my idea for the design and why I think it might actually fit perfectly within this space. So out the back here, I'm going to have a big kind of stony mountain, I guess, uh, and it's going to be purely decorative. There's going to be little chest minecarts bobbing around. There's going to be minecart rails. They're all going to be supported by wooden beams and things. I want it to look like an old gold rush mine. So that's going to be going on at the back. And then out the front here, all we're going to have is a little pressure plate and a, a couple of signs and when a customer comes to the shop they stand on the pressure plate one of the chest minecarts will come out of the mine shaft and greet them here and then they'll be able to buy their gold it's a fun idea so let's get resource gathering what on earth what? <laughs> what is going on ethos built a statue of me this was not on my bingo card for this year it's really adorable too. He's made my mustache even fancier. <laughs> He's given it little twirls on the end. I like the eyebrows. And I've got I've got some interesting hair going on as well. This is really funny. <laughs> I am gonna keep it. I have no clue where it's gonna go, but it, for now it can stay here. See now my logical brain thinks that Etho has had one of the the not hermit challenges hermit challenges. That's that's what I think has actually happened, but I'm choosing to believe that Etho just woke up one day and wanted to build a statue of me. Hermitcraft Season 10 is a strange place and I love it. Let's have a look what we got. Okay, so we've got tons of stone, so that will be useful. We have a whole bunch of cobbled deep slate. That will come in handy. That will give us good gradient potential. We still have a whole bunch of tough, and we have a fairly decent quantity of cobblestone as well. Having sat there for about 30 minutes, scratching my head on how I'm going to start this, I've decided I'm just going to start this. Now, some would say that I'm procrastinating, but I have just spent the past 10 minutes going through all these- Who goes there? Who dares disturb the slumber of the grim diggity dog? <laughs> <laughs> These horns are too much fun. This is like doom scrolling on TikTok or Instagram. I'm doom horning. Right, now that I've listened to every single possible horn in that shop, uh, now I'm going to start building. I have now started placing blocks. The process has begun. Finally. Finally, I've managed to get myself into gear. Look, look how much faster it is now that I've started. Right, I think this is going to be the footprint of the shop. So it's a pretty big one, but, you know, it's also... It's not that big. The main thing that I need to keep in mind is I have to make sure this still looks good to, from this angle because I really don't want to just give Coralis an ugly blob to stare at. I've come over here to take some inspiration and I mean the back of this build is better than any front I've made. Their backs are better than my fronts. My fronts wish they were those backs. Right, I'd say I'm pretty happy with the base of this mountain. It's got a decent quantity of texture. Obviously, I'll terraform around the bottom. I want to give some dead bush vibes for this. So there'll be lots of terracotta and packed mud kind of dotted around, gradually transitioning into the green landscape. One really subtle thing that I want to do to aid the transition into the more stony blocks is to have some smooth deep slate because it's like marginally, marginally less noisy than regular D site. I mean, you can barely tell. But, you know, I would say it is noticeable. Look, these ones are the smooth ones. Those are the cobbled ones. You can easily point out which ones are smooth and which ones aren't. But still, I mean, the transition to tough is... It's a tricky one. It's a really tricky one. Okay, what I've learned is is that the transition is tricky, but it gets much better if you set the blocks back. This, way too flat. This kind of looks good. Gosh, it is still really harsh. I mean, especially because it's next to this. I think this 
this gradient, and then this kind of comes out of nowhere. So I'm gonna do my best to cover up the bottom bit while still having it be there. I'm also making use of some of the polished tough blocks as well, which are slightly darker. And hopefully that will ease the transition a, a small amount as well. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has. Okay, that is good. That is very, very good. I decided I'd kind of just put my head down and try and get this build completed, but I've made some mistakes. I think this shape is good but I need to flip the andesite and the cobblestone. I kind of wanted it to look like it has a slightly crumbly top because I'm going to have some mining equipment up there, but I don't think it works. So I'm going to flip it around, and now it looks significantly better. This is quite a nice shape. It looks interesting. It fits in nicely with the build in front of it. I don't think it's jarring, and it's a really good base for us to build from when it comes to constructing all of our mining equipment and things that is going to be around this. So let's compartmentalize this structure, which is a smart way of saying let's break it up into smaller, manageable pieces. The first thing is the crane that I want to build on top. It's up there. So we're going to have a crane up here. And then we've got a little hole here. We're going to be extracting gold from this area. And that needs a bunch of random resources. So I'm going to gather those now. I've done a little sketch in my notebook. And I have in mind what I want this thing to look like. And I've written out all the things that I think I might need. What is happening? What is happening, Scar? Oh, I spent every penny I have on these horns. I thought your, your general train horn was bad enough. But now that I know you're fully equipped with every single horn, basically. <laughs> oh. I'm never going to sleep. What is happening? <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> so this, I would say, covers about half of the resources. The rest of them are various different types of logs. The first of various different types of logs I need is the dark oak logs. I'm also going to get a few dead bushes. And finally, some spruce wood. Okay. I think I'm in a good place to start building, so let's take this stuff over to the shopping district and get to work. The first thing that I've got to do is create the base of this build. So I'm going to use the dark oak logs here, and I'm going to even try and include a little bit of a gradient here. So we're going to go from the logs and the planks and then transition into the stripped ones because they are marginally brighter. And then this top layer here is going to be fully stripped dark oak logs. Maybe bar one. Cool. Okay, I would say this looks pretty good. I mean, it's nothing too exciting so far, but I've started adding in the next layer. So this is where our next section is going to be going and starting to look more like a build do these grindstones crash with the tough? The tough is kind of a hard block to work around because it's so greeny. It has such a greeny hue to it. But I'm sticking with them for now. I like them. I do actually think they look cool. I don't think this looks cool though. I think I need to stick to one type of wood for this part of the build. It is amazing how close and how far apart spruce and dark oak are from one another. I'm actually starting to think that maybe... I should play around with some spruce on this level. Yeah, I much prefer the spruce base over the dark oak. Okay, so now I'm doing the top section and I'm adding in all sorts of detail. I just want this to be really, really textured. I want to have loads of fun with this design. I'm really, really enjoying taking it incredibly slowly and also taking tons of inspiration from the amazing builds that are around me. Now let's see if that has paid off. Let's see if my texturing has actually helped. And I would say... It has. That looks really, really cool. I must say, progress is coming along incredibly slowly, but I am very happy with where we're going here. And that's not just because I'm smelting up smooth stone slabs, although I am going to be using them. I would say I've moved away from stone slabs these... Okay, I hadn't realized quite how many I'd used in this build. Let's move swiftly on from that one. I think our little build is all completed. The roof is on. It's looking quite cool. Now let's take a look at it from the shopping district. And... It does look quite cool. I am a big fan of that. It's taken me so long to make something so small, but I really, really like this. But it is not quite finished yet because we need to attach a crane to this thing. So that's going to be hanging out over this area here. I am quickly going to admire it again, though. I like it. I really like these fence posts. Now, I'm actually going to be taking some inspiration here. I've been looking at some references for gold mines in Minecraft, and there is one by PainterGG on Instagram. They've got a really good mine, and the, the little crane that they have is so cool. Now, I've got a little bit less space to work with here, so I'm going to remove some of the trapdoors, but I would say something like... This is looking pretty good. That seems like a good length for our crane, and then I'm somehow going to have to place a grindstone underneath here. I've managed to squash myself into the gap. Okay, grindstone goes down there. Now this is where the cool part really comes in. So we've got a chain going from the grindstone into the wall. It's kind of locked in there. And then this, this grindstone here 
looks like a pulley. So then we can have the chain going down from the grindstone and attach it to our gold. And I, I just think this is the coolest thing ever. So let's build our little hanging piece of gold. I think a tough wall will be good. And then there is our gold. Is something like this enough? I mean, obviously I need to put the other two signs on, but... Does that look enough like it's inside a cart whilst obviously showing that it's attached to the gold? I could also add something like this. That makes a little bit more structural sense, I would say. And then I could wrap all of the signposts around the edge. Yeah, I personally think this is the way to go. Now, how does it look from the floor of the shopping district? Answer is it looks really cool. <laughs> that looks so good. That looks so good. I'm absolutely chuffed a bit to that. The whole thing has taken me a couple of hours so far, and we're not even halfway done, but I'm having the best time. Like my genuine job satisfaction right now is over the moon. So let's start on the next segment, which is the upper gold storage. And this also includes the mine itself, which I'm going to turn into a void. First thing that I have to do there is create a deep pit that goes, I don't know, this far down. Hopefully this is enough. Now here's the thing. I have a pretty bright screen, so I can just about see to the bottom of this. But I'm hoping that all of you watching at home have useless screens, so this looks really good. I mean, it's not going to be particularly common that people are standing up here, so as long as it looks good as you fly over the top, that's the most important thing, and it does. So as I say, the main thing we're working on here is the upper gold storage. This isn't somewhere that people are going to be visiting, this is purely decorative, but I like the idea that you would have a little storage area for bits of gold and maybe even like spare parts for the crane. I do think now that I'm looking at this though, there should be a little pile of gold on the outside or even just some gold mine carts and things. I'm pinching another absolutely genius idea here. Yellow candles. So we've got our little stack of gold. If I start placing yellow candles on top of it, look, they look like little, they look like little gold bars. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is the best thing ever. I mean, expensive. This has cost me, this has cost me a diamond to do these gold bars, but by Jove, does it look good? Come on, how cool is that? How cool is that? Yeah, I think this has balanced the top section quite nicely. I have just added a few extra work lanterns and things, which I think fit the vibe as well. And now the entrance is also sort of done. I'm trying my best to keep it matching with this, whilst also using the logs that match up with this area. And with a few extra details and things, I now think this looks great. The signs. Signs make everything better. Now, I've been trying to think what sort of thing would be in a room like this. And one thing that comes to mind is almost like little gold storage bins. Hear me out on this one, right? So we've got, if I just make a bunch of chests here and then make a bunch of hoppers as well. I'm probably going to need more candles for this, but look, here we go. <laughs> oh wait, can I, I can't place candles on top of hoppers. Ah, oh, that was my plan. Okay, I've just had another idea of how I can get the point across here. And it will be so cool if this works. If I put a gold helmet on this guy, oh, if this works. If this works, I need a piston. Here goes. I am extremely excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that looks ridiculously cool. I do think the illusion is slightly ruined by the visible armor stand, but I think, yeah, if I do that, that is great. And then from there, I'm just trying to think of things that look like they would be doing miney stuff. So we've got hoppers running into cauldrons. We've got something happening here some kind of gold transport we've got a gold bar processor the ceiling's obviously been reinforced in some way and then over here i like the idea that there's some kind of gold transportation between layers and i think yeah if i put something like that in that sells it i mean i don't think we need anything more than that for a purely decorative room that I don't think anyone's going to visit. I think we've gone a bit overkill. But again, I think it's really nice that as you fly past this thing, you catch a glimpse of everything going on inside the room. It makes the build feel alive. It makes it feel like there's actually things happening here. It stops it being a big lifeless blob. But that tiny little room did take me two hours, so let's quickly move on from that to the minecart rail. This part is quite important. So this is going to wrap around our build. I kind of like the idea of it coming out around about here and then going along the front, dipping down a little bit and going into the mountain, and then maybe popping out the backside a little bit. I mean, it would be cool if I could make it do a legitimate loop. Now, if I take a look over at these builds here, the things that I like about the most is almost the chaotic use of wood. Uh, I mean that in the best possible way. Like, whereas I often stick to maybe one, if I'm really pushing the boat out, two different types of wood types, they're uh, basically every type of wood in the game 
is in this tiny area here. And I think that's cool. And it's something that I'm going to mess around with. Not with all of them, but I do want to see if I can incorporate four different types of wood. We've got oak, spruce, dark oak, and then mangrove. Hopefully I'm skilled enough to pull this off. So I now have a bunch of wood types and I think I'm going to start with oak coming out of this area here. Except as I began to open up the hole, I realized that I have come through right on my gold crusher. Okay, that's not quite right. So this spot is now looking good. And I, I guess, I mean, how does one do this? Um, how far out from the mountain do I want to go? I want to have enough space to have supports and things. Like I want it to look substantial. But I also don't want it to look ridiculous or like a roller coaster. I would say this template here so far is quite nice. Has a good little good little run to it. From a distance, it looks interesting. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, and it looks extra good from this side. Okay. I haven't put the mangrove in yet. I'm still too nervous. I might actually leave the mangrove from the minecart track and instead add mangrove details onto the build. Right, I'll cross that bridge in a little bit. For now, I'm trying to beef out our minecart line, and I must say, it's a little bit tricky. I think I'm doing good stuff. I really like this new thing that I've added, this little chain support to hold it up. The only thing is, is that I'd say it's a bit too in line with this. In fact, it, yeah, it's perfectly in line with it, so I think I'm going to move it over by one block, and that looks significantly better. Yeah, I think all of this is working. So now I've decked out our spruce segment as well. That's looking really nice, and also our dark oak segment is gradually coming together too. I do think this little area here could do with a lantern. I mean, does this need a chain? Do I think that needs a chain? Uh... Oh, I mean, should it be slightly higher up? Yeah, I think where it currently is is a little bit confusing. Oh, but now I have a problem that these two lights line up. So I think I'm going to drop it down really low. It's going to be like right next to the minecart rail. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. The dark oak segment is now pretty much done. And I think I'm just going to slightly wrap this around the back and then reconnect it, create my minecart loop. I do have plans for something else that I can put on the back of this structure here to make it look good from this direction. Although, to be honest, I don't even think it looks that bad in its current state. Oh yeah, I forgot. I've got a giant void in the way. So no, I can't run my minecart track through here. I am actually going to have to do the mangrove segment. Just be brave. Be brave. The rest of the build has gone well. And who cares about the back anyway? But if I do manage to pull this off... I actually think it will look super good. I mean, these these two blocks, they're not too far apart. So I, I guess I'll transition into it using, yeah, using the, the bark blocks. My goodness, I've played too much Minecraft today. I can't remember. It's a log. It's a log. Oh, gosh. I would definitely say I have a non-zero amount of concern for my own brain at this point in time. How's this looking? Is it looking cool? I do actually think it looks quite interesting. I think I could probably slip some mangrove into the rest of the build. You know what? I would actually say that looks really cool. Like, that genuinely looks good. I think there's one final detail that will really tie that backside together, and I think you can already guess what it is. When in doubt, just add something dangly. I think that should do the trick, and it absolutely has. Yeah, that looks really, really good. Okay, that looks super, super cool. I wonder, shall we... Should we put one of those around the edge? I feel like if we can get some mangrove in around here, we will kind of be onto a winner. Maybe we could even have... Oh, I wonder... I wonder if we could have like a little... something here. I fiddled around for a little while, and although I like this, I can't make anything big enough for it to be motivated. I have thought of something. But it's kind of scary, but it makes a ton of sense, and I think it would look really good. First thing I need is some of these, and the next thing I need is some of this. It is purely for decoration, but goodness me, <laughs> am I already nervous. There it is. Okay, so we've got the decorative TNT in place, and then the rest of it is going to be harmless dynamite. I mean, this... This is pretty cool. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think that looks interesting. I think this should be quite a nice little detail to add. Yeah. I'm satisfied with that. That ties everything together nicely. Okay, let's get our minecart in place and then move on to the next stage. It's almost midnight. Things have gotten out of hand. I just can't stop. I'm having too much fun. This is too much. I've been playing since 8 in the morning, and I still don't want to stop. This is the part that I'm really, really excited for. This is going to look so fun. If this works first time, 
I'm gonna be really, really happy. Is it gonna make it? I mean, it's the slowest minecart ever, but I think it just hit the powered rails. And hopefully now, it should pick up some pace, because there's a lot of powered rails out the back. Although I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's definitely starting to feel like it's stopped. Yeah, I think it could do with a little extra boost. Hopefully that will now send it all the way around. I mean, there is a lot of booster rails here. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's flying. Oh, it is working. Th yes. <laughs> that is like the perfect speed as well, because it's kind of a fun speed. If it's just shooting around full speed the whole time, I don't think that's quite as entertaining. But the fact it kind of shoots out <laughs> and then gradually winds its way about. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. It also adds some visual interest to the back. You see, the majority of the hermits are going to be approaching the shopping district from this direction, from over here. So it's nice to know that as they're flying in, they have a higher likelihood of actually seeing the minecart making its way around. I've made some really minor tweaks to our little TNT zone. Now I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with this entire section. So finally, let's move on to the shop itself and all of the areas surrounding the build. But by this point, I was absolutely knackered. My energy had run out, so I decided to go to sleep, wake up the next morning, refreshed and ready to do some serious terraforming. And I was excited because the style for this is very much Gold Rush era gold mines. And the block palette for that really fits into the sort of wasteland aesthetic, which involves all of the terracottas, the packed mud, the granite, the coarse dirt and things. And I just, I absolutely love the way that looks. So I had a blast just chucking all of those around. It creates such a unique look. It's great fun. It's kind of easy. It's kind of foolproof. You don't have to really think about anything. You can just crack on with it. And I, I the result is always really great. And then when it came to actually creating plants, that's where I began to struggle. This is something that I'm still working on as a builder. It's not something that really comes naturally for me. I started off trying to make some, some custom cacti and that did not go to plan. So instead, I decided to stick with the dead aesthetic. I had a bunch of dead bushes around, but then also I thought I would make some larger custom dead bushes out of wooden fence posts. And I would say it works quite well. Then just as I was finishing up, Iskal started blaring a bunch of different horns. Okay, here's the challenge. Yep. Okay, here we go. We are gonna make a story, a story using horns. Yeah. Okay, you can only read the thing and we will see what happens. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, uh, I've, got one, I've got one to okay. start. Hello and welcome to another Hermitcraft episode with me, Hermitcraft. What are you doing? I must go. My people need me. You actually might have a good idea here. You gotta get money, gotta get money, <laughs> gotta get money, and let anyone else get money. I declare from this high throne that these dogs shall be taken away immediately. I know this is kind of awkward, but I would like to see your butt, please. Spoken like a true king. Okay, that is... 100% madness. This is illegal! <laughs> right, let's start stripping, babies. This is illegal! Feel his bits. <laughs> I think, we, I think that, that, that finishes the story. I think we can all agree. It's a made-up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. It never happened. Fairly certain we're not going to win the literary award for that one, but it was an enjoyable experience. So now we finally build the actual shop itself. Now, if you remember earlier on, this is going to be the exit for our gold minecart. So when the player approaches the shop, the gold minecart will come to them. They'll be able to grab their gold and then it will travel off back inside the mine. The first thing I want to do is create the sign and I absolutely love this. So I'm going to be pinching this idea. But I must admit though, it is a bit of a painful process. I mean, is that a G? How does that look? Okay, that actually looks quite good. Right, and then if I do a dark oak sign underneath it, I think I'm going to do all of mine in a line. Oh, and in case you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm just pasting in Unicode squares and then using a reference image to try and make it so that they line up. It's not fast. <laughs> Man, okay, it already looks cool. It already looks cool. Let's get ourselves some yellow dye. This is surely going to make a big difference as well. Very good. Do I add in the glow squid as well? I mean, surely. It's, it's very bright. It is very bright, but it is, it's very gold. They look like little gold bars. Yeah. Okay, that is ridiculously cool. Right, let's get our entrance sorted. And I've decided to go for dark oak with this one. And I think if I just... If I start putting signs and things around... 
I mean, I want this to look really, really ratty. Does something like that look good? I might actually swap these out for spruce fence posts. Yeah, that looks great. And then also with the addition of this lamppost right here, I think that ties the whole thing together. So let's start getting our minecart rail in, which I have now done. So this is winding its way along. This is where the player is going to stand to retrieve their gold. I thought it could maybe do with some extra dead bushes and things, so I've added those in. So now let's wire up all of the redstone. It should genuinely be really quite simple. When we're standing on the pressure plates, we want these rails to be powered off. But when we're standing off the pressure plate, we want the rails to be powered on. And then we want the reverse of that for the rails on the inside of the build. So this is the redstone line underneath the pressure plates, and then this redstone line runs into that powered rail over there. Then we just need to continue making our way along until we arrive where our minecart is. Excellent. Wait, how have I got these the wrong way round? It's actually painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, redstone line runs into there, and then when we stand on the pressure plate, this one, which is normally off, will then be turned on. So finally, let's make our chest minecart. We can put it on our rail, and that should be sent off into the mine. And then when you want to get gold, all you have to do is stand on this pressure plate right here, and we should see... <laughs> I said we should see... That our chest minecart pops out and we can access everything that we need. I mean, is this system not really cool? I feel like this system is awesome. Yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with that. It's satisfying, it doesn't take too long. There's just something really fun about it. So I guess now I have to go and stock this thing up. But actually, just quickly before I do that, I really like the idea of it playing the sound of a bell as you stand on the pressure plate, as if you're calling the minecart. But I know they're not craftable, so I'm hoping that none of the local villages have been raided and I can just go and grab one. I've spotted a village. I have spotted a village. Do they have a bell? Please tell me they have a bell. There's a chance I've set myself a really annoying challenge. This village has been raided. Oh my goodness, I think the bell's been taken from this one as well. Yes! Yes! A bell! Finally a bell! Oh my goodness! <laughs> and with the bell in place and the gold stocked, the build is now done. I am extremely, extremely happy with how everything's come together here. This is probably one of my favorite Minecraft builds I've worked on, and I know I say that a lot, but this this has kind of marked a slight transition in the way that I approach building projects. I really try my best to think of the story behind this build. I try to think of the story behind every element, why each thing is there, and I like to think that it shows in the end result. I know that there are obviously tons of incredible builders on the Hermitcraft server and tons of people on here that already think this way, but this is a first for me and it's been incredibly enjoyable and it's something that I'm going to be taking forward into many of my future projects. So I hope you enjoyed me taking you along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed the process and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.